when I first saw the term larval manager, it makes absolutely no sense to me. But when I dive deeper into it, it's actually something very simple. It is a design pattern or code pattern that allows developer to switch between an implementation of a feature in our app. Let me elaborate on this. Now suppose we're building an e-commerce website. And our e-commerce website will need to have a checkout feature for the user to pay for a product. Now we know that there's a billion different kind of payment gateway out there in the world. PayPal, Stripe, Venmo, so on and so forth. Now each of these payment provider helps us to facilitate payment in our website. However, their implementation or how we integrate them into our website will be vastly different based on their API. In other words, if we intend to support different kind of payment gateway in our website, we got to write a different set of code for each of the payment gateway. Now without a design pattern or framework, our code implementations of this payment gateway could get messy very, very quickly. And thankfully, the manager pattern is designed to solve this problem. In short, the manager pattern is an abstraction layer that allows us to switch between different implementations or the sole code driver, which in our payment example will be our payment gateways. The job of a manager is really to set up the connection to different drivers. For example, if the user wanted to pay with PayPal, then in our code, we should first instantiate the manager class and get it to connect to PayPal and finally get PayPal to pay for the amount. If you zoom out for a bit, the manager pattern is just the polymorphism concept in OOP in practice. Laravel uses the manager pattern in a lot of places and you might have used one already without knowing it. This includes database connections, where we have different types of database out there like SQLite, MySQL, Postgres, and so on and so forth. The Laravel storage system where we can choose between using S3 or our local file. The Laravel session where we can choose the driver to be memory or database. Even Laravel's authentication system is using manager behind the scene as well, where we can choose to use sessions or passport or other drivers. And now without further ado, Let's dive into the code and we'll look at manager in practice. I'm currently in a fresh installation of Laravel. And before we learn how to create our own manager class, I would like to show you how Laravel uses manager in a source code. I'll use session manager as our example. We know that session in Laravel uses different implementation. For example, array, file, cookies, and database. And just by looking at this file, you can already see the different type of drivers that are available to us. And we can also see that the session manager is extending a base class called manager. And this manager class is where all the magic happens. The manager class might look scary in the beginning, but I want to shift your focus to a function called driver. This driver is the primary entry point of this manager class. The driver function takes in a driver argument, which is a string. If we did not pass in any driver argument, then the function will by default call another function called getDefaultDriver, which is an abstract method that's meant to be implemented by any inherited classes. If we go back to our session manager, you can see that the getDefaultDriver is currently returning the driver as per defined inside the configuration file. Once we get a driver string, the next step is to create an instance of our driver. By default, Laravel will cache any created driver inside the manager class's drivers array. This will speed up the driver retrieval process if we are going to retrieve the same driver for multiple times in a row. This also implies that the manager class should be created as a singleton. Because we want to persist the driver cache whenever we want to instantiate the manager. If the driver is not found inside the cache, then we'll go ahead and create a new instance of a driver by calling the create driver function. And once created, we'll store it inside the driver's array. And now let's take a look at the create driver function. First of all, the function will attempt to create the driver based on the custom driver creator. We will come back to this later, but essentially the custom creator will allow developers to customize or write their own drivers. For example, 
If you don't like the database session driver that was provided by Laravel by default, you could make use of this custom curator feature and write your own database driver so that it can fit your application's need. Anyway, if there's no custom drivers, we'll go ahead to dynamically call the driver curation method, which has a prefix of curate and end it with driver. If we look at the session manager base class, you can see a lot of driver creation methods here, which are following the naming pattern. If the method exists inside the manager class, then we'll go ahead and call the method. And essentially what you want to do inside each driver creation method is that you want to return an instance of the driver. The drivers should have the same API, but the implementation can be different. All right, and now let me show you how to create our own manager and drivers. I'll stick to our payment gateway example that I talked about earlier in the video. So the first step is for me to create a new library folder inside our project root. The reason I want to create a library folder is because the payment gateway is a completely separated module from our application logic. We can treat it just like a third party package. Next, I'll declare the namespace inside our composing JSON file and also map it to the corresponding folder. And then the first thing I want to do inside our payment library is to create the manager class. I'll call it payment gateway manager. The class will extend the base manager class provided by Laravel and we'll need to implement all the abstract methods. In our case, there'll only be one, which is the get default driver method. And then I'll create the payment service provider, which will simply register our payment gateway manager as a singleton. I'll also quickly create a facade for our payment gateway for easy access. Alright, once created, let's go back to our manager class and suppose we want to have two different drivers for our payment, PayPal and Stripe. Let's define the driver's creators inside our manager class. Based on what we have learned so far inside the base manager class, we'll define the driver's creator by the naming convention, create PayPal driver and create Stripe driver. Next, let's create our drivers as I mentioned earlier, every driver should have the same API. In other words, we'll need a contract or a PHP interface if you like. I'll go ahead and create another folder called drivers and I'll define a new contract file inside it. And just for demonstration, we will have two dummy methods, pay and refund inside our payment gateway. Next, I'll create both of the drivers file where they will implement the payment drivers contract. And just for testing purposes, I will dump a simple string in the pay method for each driver. We're almost ready to use our payment library. And just one last thing, which is to add the auto completion to our payment facade. We will add the driver method in a PHP doc of our payment facade and also specify the return type as payment driver contract. All right, let's test our code. We'll go to our web PHP file and we'll go ahead and call our payment facade and use the PayPal driver to pay for our dinner. Let's go to our browser and see what will happen. And whoops, seems like we forgot to run composer dump auto load. Let's quickly do that. We'll run bash inside our PHP container and run the composer dump autoload command. All right, let's try to refresh our page. And now we see another error. This is because we have still yet to create our PayPal driver inside our manager. Let's quickly fix that. And we'll also make our default driver to be PayPal. We'll go back to our browser and refresh and now we see PayPal Pay. It's working. Let's switch our driver to Stripe to test it out as well. And refresh our page and it still works. Great. And before we end the lesson, I want to talk about the custom curator. Let's go back to our manager class. And if we look at the usage of the custom curators array that we talked about earlier, the only place that we would add a new item to this array is within the extend method of the manager class. 
And as you can see, the array item inside the custom creators are callbacks or closure. And the callbacks will accept one argument, which is the container instance, in other words, our app instance. And the registered driver creator will be called inside the correct driver function if the driver exists. And now let me show you a quick example on how to use the extend function. We'll go to our service provider and we'll add our custom driver there. Again, I want to remind you that the extend function is just a way to add a driver implementation without touching the library's source code. We'll store our manager into a variable and we'll go ahead and call the extend function on it and I'll call my driver ABC. And as we mentioned earlier, the second argument is a callback function that takes in our app instance. The callback function should return us a new instance of a driver. And in the real world, we should create a new file for this new driver. But here, just for demonstration, I'm going to use an anonymous class that implements the payment driver contract. And again, in a pay method, I'll simply dump ABC pay. And also we we'll need to include our payment service provider inside our app configuration file. Otherwise, the service provider will not be used. And now let's go to our browser and visit the home page once again. And we can clearly see that we have ABC pay dumped onto the page. And that means our custom driver is working nicely. All right, that's it. Hopefully you learned something new today. Key takeaways for this lesson. The manager pattern applies polymorphism in object-oriented programming to manage features implementations. In other words, drivers in our app. Laravel uses the manager pattern in a lot of places, including storage, session, database, channels, and etc. Manager should be created as a singleton to read the benefit of cache. The extend function allows us to add a custom driver without touching the source code of the library. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next lesson. If you would like to see more content, consider supporting us by becoming a member at my website, acadia.io. It is similar to Patreon, but in return, you get a lot of premium tutorials and lessons. If you can't become a member, that's totally fine. We are just happy that you are here. We spend a lot of time and energy to produce high quality videos for you. Feel free to check out our other videos on YouTube. And if you can leave a thumbs up, you will really make my day. If you subscribe, I would jump for joy and I'll make more videos for you. Thanks for your support and I'll see you next time.